Welcome to a very special edition of Rebellion Research's educational series. We have the legend himself, Jeff Adams, the man who led the Alexa team, with us live to share his views on all things NLP, remote work, and the future of the world. So excited. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Alexander, it's great to be here. The future of the world, that's, a, that's an ambitious topic. <laughs> The honor is all mine. I spent my whole life working with scientists, Jeff, and you're absolutely one of the brightest minds that I've, I've gotten to know. And you know, I'd like I'd like to think of you these days as as a friend. And and boy, do I respect the work you've done. And I, you know, let's let's cut right to the chase. The audience wants to hear the Alexa story. Tell us, tell us about it, and then we can get to the present and then the future. Sure. So um, I, I I need to start at the at the prequel. To the Alexa story. So I was, uh, I was hired uh, by a, a small startup called Yap to put together uh, a world-class speech research team to develop uh, the best speech research, uh, the best speech recognition uh, in the industry. And we did that. We were the first team to uh, develop speech recognition that was beating the accuracy of our competitors that were using humans to transcribe audio. And um, we were uh, we we're very proud of that, and that got the attention of Amazon. And so we we got a we got a phone call one day that Amazon was interested in acquiring our company. And at the time, you know, we just thought of Amazon as a bookstore. And uh, and I thought, what do they want speech recognition for? This was in 2011, uh, 2010, 2011, in there, and. Um, and uh, they uh, they wouldn't tell us what they wanted. And finally, um, the the discussions progressed to the point where the acquisition happened. And even still, they had not told us what they wanted us to do. And uh, it was driving us all a little bit crazy. We had kind of a betting pool uh, among those of us uh, at Yap about you know what are they going to ask us to work on. Anyway, they uh, they they hired us. Or, sorry, they bought us uh, and. Um, and we all uh, went out, my team of a dozen or so speech scientists and engineers, we all flew out to Seattle to the Amazon campus. And uh, they brought us into a room and shut the doors and locked them and uh, closed the windows. And they said, what we're telling you here can't leave this room, not even to your families. Um, and, uh, uh, and, <clears throat> and they described their vision at that time, the prototype of, uh, uh, the Amazon Echo, and we were fascinated by it. We thought that's very ambitious for this, you know, for this bookstore company. Uh, that, I, I mean, okay, Amazon was more than a bookstore then. There was Kindle and AWS and all sorts of other things going on, but still, this was really pretty uh, revolutionary. Um, but w we all kind of looked at each other and said, you know, that this isn't going to work. Um, the the big thing that was missing in speech technology was no one had figured out really how to get speech recognition to work from a distance in a room where there are echoes. When you, when you speak to a microphone, if you speak to your Echo or your Google Home or whatever, the speech is going from your mouth to the device, but it's also bouncing off the windows and the doors and the desk and the walls and the fridge and whatever else. And, it's, and, and, and so the device is getting like 20 copies of your speech, all slightly different, a uh, little bit of delay. And you and I, we, we just adapt to that. We don't, we're not aware of that when we're talking to each other, but um, that throws off the speech recognition. And that, at the time, no one had really cracked that. Um, and we told them that, <laughs> we said, uh, this, is, this is really hard. Uh, and no one has figured out how to solve this. And they were great. They just said, well, uh, solve it. You've got essentially an unlimited budget. Hire the best people you can. Work as long as it takes and, uh, and make it happen. And so we did. So I spent the next couple of years mostly recruiting scientists. I visited all the best schools where speech uh, was being taught as a discipline uh, around the world and, um, and tried to create some interest and find the best people and recruit them to come at Amazon without telling them what we were working on, which was a challenge. Um, 
but uh, but we did. We we interviewed hundreds of of people. We hired maybe seventy or eighty uh, by the time I left, um, and um, and and worked for three years, and and actually cracked it, and and, and were able to develop the technology of far field speech recognition. Now. I don't mean to say we're the only ones working on that. There were other people uh, at other places working on that. Uh, Microsoft was trying to do something similar for uh, uh, Xbox, um, but but we really um, um, we we were by far the biggest group working on that, uh, and uh, and really made the, the the breakthroughs. So that was um, that was a lot of fun. Um, um, parallel. I, I would say the I'm sorry. Parallels to Tom will the parallels to Tom Wolfe's right stuff, uh, the right stuff is just unbelievable. I, someday people are going to make a movie about the work you've done. It's, you know, the drama is just fascinating. The, the stealth nature to it is fascinating. The fact that Amazon is now the largest company in the history of recorded time makes it endlessly fascinating. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Founder with um, Michael Keaton uh, about Ray Kroc. But it's it's actually a fantastic movie and one that has already a cult following. So I think uh, the story of Alexa will be a fantastic one one day. I'm very excited to watch that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know if they'll ask me who gets to play me, but that that'll be fun. Oh yeah, no, that that would be fun. So how was your actual time at Amazon? You loved it. Um, I, I loved it and hated it. Uh, Amazon is a uh, yeah. is a pressure cooker. It's uh, it's a very intense place. Mm -hmm. Um. And, um, but I, I love the people I worked with. I learned a lot. I, I really uh, soaked in the Amazon corporate culture. Uh, and uh, it, it was just, it was an exciting place to work. Um, but it was, it was very stressful. I was on the road as often as not. Uh, we, we set up offices in five locations and I was traveling to them all the time and, and, uh, and whatever it was. Uh, it was, it, it uh, started to burn me out after a while. Um, and so when we launched the product, uh, I decided to leave and, and start my own speech company, which has been uh, my adventure for the last six years. Yes, Cobalt Speech actually inspired Rebellion Research. You know, years ago, your thoughts on remote work, I, I thought were revolutionary when we first spoke. The idea that you could have engineers in Ukraine engineers in Malaysia getting a better job done while talking to them on a daily basis to me was just a whole new radical way of thinking. Now one that has disseminated throughout the entire planet. Yeah, by necessity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it, that, that, was, uh, that was something that I pioneered at YAP. I realized when I was given the task of hiring the best speech scientists that I could, uh, at, at Yap, this small unknown company, how could I possibly compete with, you know, the the Microsofts and IBMs and and Googles of the world? Uh, and and I decided one thing that I could do is I could hire people who didn't want to relocate to Silicon Valley or wherever the the big campuses were. Maybe their you know their spouse was working somewhere else and and whatever. And so I gave people that flexibility, and then. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to still keep a, a culture where everyone felt like a tight, close-knit group, even though we were dispersed. So we did a lot of video meetings, and a couple times a year we would bring everyone together for like a few days or a week uh, to, you know, from from wherever they were uh, to work together. And we're doing that again now at Cobalt. So we three times a year, except except during pandemics. Uh, three times a year, we uh, we get together somewhere, uh, rent some big houses, and and spend a week living together, so that we still have that camaraderie. We 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 know each other on a personal level, and then when we go back to our homes and work for the bulk of the time, uh, we, um, uh, we 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 have those relationships uh, that I think are important in a company. Sure. So yeah, that remote work has been a an important part of how of my strategy for getting the best and the brightest to be able to come together and do something cool. So what do you see for the future of Alexa? What do you think it'll be able to do in five and 10 years? Uh, I, do you know what? The sky is the limit. Um, when I, um, 
when I was at Amazon, we spent a lot of time sort of brainstorming and thinking about where we could go. And we explored so many possibilities that, uh, that Amazon's not going to be able to pursue all of them. I mean, since, since I left in the last six years, Amazon has hired hundreds more speech engineers and scientists to, to pursue everything. Uh, and they're doing you know, amazing work. But, you know, they, they, there's so many possibilities for where you can take this that, um, uh, that, that it's hard for me to predict that because the, you know, the decisions for where they're going to go are going to be made at the business level uh, uh, in, in a room where I'm not. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to, of, of all the possibilities, I don't know what they're going to chase. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to watch it. And, uh, and, I, and I, I'm a, a loyal fan and user. So uh, whatever they do, I'm going to enjoy taking advantage of it. Yeah. No, my, my question is when, when will Alexa have legs? Five years, 10 years? <laughs> well, I don't know. Amazon does have a robotics group. Um, and that's focused mostly on, you know, warehouse automation. But uh, it would not take too much to to put the the robotics and and Alexa in the same uh, in the same thing and uh, and get you know a home assistant that can walk around a, a mobile home assistant. Yeah. Um, that would be very cool. No, at, at Rebellion, a number of my students have focused on Amazon's robotics division, and it is a, a juggernaut. It's just unbelievable they are really going out and getting everyone they possibly can the best and the brightest I've got friends who are there now as well and so you know but they say the exact same thing as you Jeff. working at amazon it is fantastic and it's also you know hellish at uh, various points and so you know it's, it's great to have worked there yeah that's that's right it's uh it's like grad school it's like the the thing that i'm glad i did but it's not a not something to do for a long time at least for me Yes, yes, yes. Rather, kind of like uh, the way many people perceive IBM to be, uh, if you will. So, yeah. so now in this post-coronavirus world, do you think speech recognition will have sped up in terms of development, or do you think it was slowed down by coronavirus? Mm -hmm. that both sides of the story. I, uh, I, I think uh, it's changing course a little bit. It's hard for me to see whether it's speeding up or slowing down, there are- Tell us about the new course. I'm sorry, say again? I said, please tell us about the new course. Where do you, where do you see it navigating? Well, well, I think um, there's, uh, there's more, uh, there's a lot of interest these days in um, sort of automating things to make them touchless so that you don't have to, you know, it's, when you go to an ATM, there's a, you're, you're touching all the buttons and then the next person comes in and they're touching all the buttons. And now we're much more aware than we were a year ago about oh, the, you know, communication of disease from you know, one user to five another. infinity. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think, you know, there's a lot of people who are worrying about, well, so how can we make that touchless? And the natural place for that to go is voice. So, um, to do uh, voice authentication, uh, biomarkers by voice to make sure that it's you, uh, to have you navigate your transaction by voice. And I, I used ATMs as an example, but it, this this applies to all sorts of um, all sorts of places. Uh, I <clears throat> I also think that now that uh, people are going, a lot more is going to be done remotely. I think you know this idea that. People uh, work from home and, and communicate on Zoom or other teleconference uh, applications. I don't think that's I don't think that's going to disappear afterwards. And so there's there's going to be uh, you know people who want uh, uh, transcripts of those meetings or analysis of those meetings or or uh, whatever. There's I, I just I think that um, coronavirus has shifted our attention in ways that that the voice applications. Uh, that people pursue are going to be slightly different. It, it, um, it, it's like I said at Amazon when I said there's so many possibilities, I don't know what they're going to choose to do. That's the way it is with, with the whole world. There's so many possibilities for what people could pursue with, with voice. I, um, it's just a matter of which, where do people want to put their energy? 
and and the world has shifted so people are putting their energy in slightly different things but some things don't change uh there you know there will still be a lot of voice applications for home assistance and and that hasn't maybe change too much with the coronavirus. Uh, there are voice applications in like call centers and, and uh, contact centers where um, uh, you're either automating it or you're monitoring uh, what's happening uh, in healthcare. I, there's, there's still many, many applications. Uh, that's been, I, I have to say, that's been the most exciting part of my work at Cobalt Speech and Language is the variety of applications that people approach us to help them work on. Um, we're, we're a sort of uh, software uh, 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 partner outsourcing consulting company for speech and voice applications. And uh, people come to us with all sorts of interesting uh, projects. And I've seen a little bit of a shift with coronavirus, but what, whatever the shift is, uh, the thing that's been most exciting is uh, the variety, the creativity that's out there in people trying to, to solve uh, uh, so many different uh, interesting problems that they, that they bring to us. No, no, a variety of life is very important. I, I personally, I get bored of just AI and machine learning and I, I get excited to do, you know, you know, more applications looking at crime and playing with you know, robotics. It's, uh, you know, it makes life worth living, so. This was a wonderful conversation. You are a legend, a gentleman, and a scholar. And uh, I couldn't have been more thankful to have you on, Jeff. You're the best. Really, I was angry. It was fantastic to talk and, to you. And you're going to come and you're going to give a talk to, uh, to the Berkeley students. I have your word on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love to. Wonderful. Great. Come back to my alma mater. You stay safe and uh, be well, Jeff. All right. Thank you, Alexander.